Good morning and welcome to our online service today, the 10th of May. It's good to have you all with us. So one or two notices as we begin. There are a few things coming up in the diary that I'd like to tell you about. One is that we're going to be having a Zoom prayer meeting on Saturday the 16th of May at 10 o'clock. And we're going to be focusing on praying for different countries in the world. So if you're interested in taking part in that and particularly if you'd like have a nation on your heart uh, that you'd like to pray for then do please email me let me know um, there'll be an email going out about this anyway after that we want to try and meet regularly for prayer once a week by zoom it seems to be a good way to connect we'd also like to set up a zoom Bible study, discussion group, something quite informal. You don't need to be theologically trained. There's no signing up fee. Um, that's going to be happening quite soon as well. I know two or three of you are quite interested in doing that and others may like to join. If you're not already part of a life group Zoom meeting, then that would be something you might like to consider joining in with. Um, we have the Thy Kingdom Come prayer um, focus at the end of this month at the end of may for a week we'll be doing different prayer activities so do look out for that and finally just to thank you for contributing towards the food bank thank you to paul williamson and john hemming clark who've been organizing the distribution of uh, the collections taking them up to the food bank if you would like to donate towards the very important work of the food bank at the moment you can drop supplies off at 62 lubbock road here or John Hemming Clark's house, which is 1A Holbrook Lane in Chislehurst, or at Paul Williamson's house, and he is 14 Aspen Close, Bromley, BR1 2NZ. So let's pray in a moment that first of all, if it's your birthday this week, here's a birthday sweet. Um, sorry, you're not actually able to get hold of one of these, are you? I'll eat it on your behalf, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just save them. Anyway, if it's your birthday, happy birthday, and do make sure you've got something nice to eat and drink today and celebrate. Hopefully you've got somebody else to celebrate it with and uh, look forward to being able to celebrate properly when we're all able to gather again soon. So let's pray as we begin our time of worship together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we can be together, even if not physically, we can meet online and we thank you, Lord, that where two or three are gathered in your name, you have promised to be there among them. We ask that you will bless us during this time of worship together. You'll draw close to us and that we may worship you for who you are and worship you in spirit and in truth for Jesus' sake. Amen.
prayers today focus on the rainbow and if you'd like to join me at the end of each section we're saying Lord help us to trust in your promises as our prayer. I'm going to use the colours of the rainbow so we're going to start with red. Lord red reminds us of our anguish and our despair. Lord we pray for all of those who are angry and hurting right now. We pray for all of those who are frustrated. We pray that you would meet us in our despair and help us to share our strong emotions. Help us to develop our relationship with you. Help us to turn towards you. Lord, help us to trust in your promises. And the orange the amber of the traffic light. Always be prepared, always be ready to act. Lord, help us to always be ready. Help us to be ready to share your good news and your gospel and your love with the goodness and goodness with those around us, in our community or wherever we can. Lord, help us in this time to be ready to reach out in new and different ways and to love the people around us. Lord, help us to trust in your promises. And the yellow, the yellow that reminds us of sunsets, perhaps of holidays past, perhaps of longing, and for all those things that we long for. Lord, I pray that you would help us uh, to trust that that you know the future and that you have a plan. Lord, we pray for our beautiful world. We pray that during this time we may enjoy its goodness. We may enjoy the beauty that we see around us. Lord, help us to trust in your promises. And green. The green reminds us of the green hills and where our food comes from and for our food provision. And so, Lord, we pray for all of those who will not see green hills and harvests this year. We pray for all of those who are going without food to help those around them or are without food. Lord, we thank you for the work of the food bank. We thank you for all of those volunteers who are getting food to vulnerable people. But Lord, we pray for those far away who will have nothing. Lord, stir our hearts to act. Lord, help us to trust in your promises. And the blue. The blue reminds us of the NHS, reminds us of all those who are in hospital, who are sick, who are unwell. And it reminds us of all those that have been lost. Lord, we pray for all those that are grieving right now. We pray for all those families that are hurt, that are wondering why. Lord, we pray that you would meet with them. In their despair, would you bring comfort? We remember now silently those that have been lost, or those that are in need of your healing. We call them to mind. Lord, help us to trust in your promises. And lastly, the purples that remind us of royalty. The purple. So we pray for all those leaders. We pray for all of those who are required to make wise and good decisions. We pray for kind hearts. We pray for just hearts. We pray for wise decisions bring to you now all of our leaders, our church leaders, our politicians, 
Lord, help us to trust in your promises. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me, for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this passage from John chapter 14 begins with these powerful words that many of us will have heard before. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. I'm sure there's not a single one of us who have been not troubled by the events over the last few weeks, whether it's the number of people who have died from the virus, the numbers who are getting infected and ill, but also the economic consequences upon different nations, our own nation, because of the lockdown. And we may be anxious and troubled about the future. But of course, it's all about perspective. It's right to acknowledge and to hold within our hearts much of the sadness and the anxiety that we feel, the frustration even, about the current situation. It's okay to acknowledge that, and God wouldn't expect us to do anything else other than to acknowledge it. But at the same time, we need to get a Christian, a godly perspective on what is happening. And that's why Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And of course, the context for this, if we look back in chapter 13, is that Jesus has just shared his final meal with them during his ministry. He's washed their feet. He's told them that he's going to be betrayed. And perhaps most crucially, he said to them in chapter 13, I will be taken away from you and where I'm going, you cannot come. There's going to be this separation. There's going to be this change. So Jesus is preparing the disciples for a time of change and for having to get to used to a new normal when he's not going to be around. And the Bible's full of examples of this kind of stuff, right from the beginning. We have Noah with his family in the ark. They come out of the ark after 40 days of uh, lockdown, 
and they have to begin what is a new normal. They have to get used to a new situation. Abraham left his home and went to a part of the world he'd never been to before and had to get used to something new. Joseph's story, the story of the Hebrews in Egypt and when they were led out of Egypt into the, into the wilderness where they stayed for many years, then when, even when they went into the promised land, there was conflict, there was trouble, there were struggles that went on over through Joshua's leadership. And all the time, there was change and getting used to a new normal. And it's really helpful to read the Bible to see this stuff. After Jesus had ascended into heaven, the disciples had to get used to a new normal where they were led by the Holy Spirit. And they had the most amazing adventures during the book of Acts when they took the gospel from Jerusalem, Judea to the ends of the earth. But of course, those adventures weren't without their struggles. There was uh, um, adventure, but there was also persecution. There was danger. Many of them died. We have to get used to this idea that for God's people, there is often change and adjusting to a new normal. But in the midst of it, God tells us to trust in him. So God's people have been here before. We've been in situations like this before. Now, when we move on in this uh, passage, we see that Jesus says, in my father's house are many rooms, I go there to prepare a place for you and you know the way to the place where I'm going. And now we have poor Thomas, who throughout history has been known as Doubting Thomas, when actually he asked the question that we'd all have liked to have asked. And we may be asking right now. So Thomas says to Jesus, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Any of you asked that question in the last few weeks? How can we know the way ahead out of all of this? I've asked it many a time and I've put it into prayer. How are we going to find the way forward, Lord? And poor Doubting Thomas asked this question and as a result of asking it, gets one of the most powerful phrases and sentences from Jesus that we ever have read in the Bible. Jesus says to Thomas gently but authoritatively, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What a wonderful thing that Jesus says here. So let's just take those three things very quickly. The way, the truth and the life. Now, has anyone ever said to you, do you know the way? You're going on a journey. Do you know the way? And you go, mm, I, I think so. And do you know, anyone remember what, what one of these is? Uh, years ago, when we used to make lots of uh, journeys across France with our boys to different parts of the country to go camping and so on, we used to take a map. And actually, I still would take a map because I don't fully trust my sat-nav all of the time. I remember we were driving through France and the sat-nav suddenly cut out and we were a bit stuck. So we had to go back to the map. And I, I actually quite happen to like maps. Now, if somebody were to say to you, you're going from here to here and uh, you've got to take a direct route. Don't just go on the road. You've got to cross the countryside. Go on, off you go, find the way. You might say, but I don't really know. I've not been in this country before. I've not been this way before. Um, do, can I use my sat-nav? Well, she, yes, you can, but it won't be very useful when you're crossing uh, rivers and, uh, and, and parks and uh, countryside and so on. You say, well, how am I going to get there? What if that person then said to you, I am the way. I will, I will take you there. I will go with you. That's essentially what Jesus says. He doesn't leave us at the side of the road and say, right, off you go. Find your way. Find your way in life. Um, this is how you do it. Jesus says, I am the way. I will go with you. I will go with you. And that's what Jesus does in our lives. He's with us all the time. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So on this journey, Jesus says, I am the way. I am with you. Then he says, I am the truth. Now, the other thing I quite like doing, especially when we are traveling, is, is reading one or two of Bill Bryson's uh, travel books. It's quite a good one. Uh, there's lots of humor in it. And this is one about the United Kingdom. Now, if I were to say to you, this is the truth about the way the United Kingdom is, you might say, well, yeah, that's the truth from Bill Bryson's perspective. And you'd be right, because you might pick up another travel book about the United Kingdom and read something completely different. And the problem is that we, we come across truth from different perspectives. And more and more, it's getting confusing, isn't it? We say we live in a, a post-truth society. We hear about fake news and we don't know whether a lot of the stuff we read on the internet is true or not. But Jesus says to us, I am the truth. I am the truth. 
And because Jesus was a man of complete integrity, completely trustworthy, and because he was fully human and fully divine, we know that Jesus is the truth. He tells us the truth about how the world is. He tells us the truth about who we are. And he tells us the truth about who God is, more important, most importantly of all. So Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. Now I'm going to play um, uh, a song in the background here. It's one of my favourite songs and I've been listening to it quite a bit recently. It's by Sting and it's called Fragile. And it's about the fragility of life. In fact, I think it was written after uh, one of his friends had died of AIDS. And we know that from what we've seen over the last few weeks that life physically here on earth is very fragile. The coronavirus has shown us that life is fragile. And it's important to be aware of that. It's delicate, it's precious. But you know, even more importantly than that, Jesus is the life. Now last week we talked about this phrase that Jesus used when he said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Well, you know, you can be physically really well, but inside you may not have much life. People might say that they're just existing even when they are physically very well. And it's possible to be physically well, but, but quite dead inside. But Jesus came so that we could have life, life to the full, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally. And you can be someone like, the, the, another book I've been reading the last couple of years, one of the most powerful books I've read is a book called I Can Write. This is written by a boy called Jonathan Bryan, who physically is very restricted. He learned to write using his eyes because he has nothing, no other part of his body that can function properly. And he has an amazing trust in God. Now physically, his life isn't, isn't very strong, but he is one of the most fully alive people that I have ever read about. And it just shows you that Jesus came to give us abundant life. And Jesus didn't just point and say, God is the way, God is the truth, God is the life. Jesus pointed to himself and said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So may your hearts not be troubled today. May you and I be able to trust in God in these changing times. And may we know him as the way, the truth and the life. Amen.
So as we come to the end of our time of worship together, thank you so much for joining us. We pray blessing upon you that you will keep well and safe and know the presence of God in your life at this time. So let's finish with a prayer and blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you that although our hearts are troubled by what is going on at the moment, Lord, that you bring us peace and you bring us love. And we thank you, Jesus, that you are the way, the truth and the life. And may you continue to be at the centre of our lives during this challenging time. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.